Hello, welcome to our video. Uh, we did go live earlier, but we're gonna try this again. We're doing a review of Nathan Fitch's documentary called Island Soldier. It's premiering this uh, November 3rd at 8.15 at HIF, the Hawaiian International Film, International Film Festival. Festival. Um, we were all very fortunate to get an advanced screening. Yes. Uh, Nathan Fitch uh, let us watch it so we could get a a review in and critique it so thank you very much to him for that um, I think we're gonna go over our initial reactions what we liked about it maybe what we didn't like about it so there will be some slight spoiler warnings for anybody who hasn't seen it um, but before we go any further I just want to introduce myself I'm Russell from Lithi in the state of Yap I'm here with two of my colleagues we'll go right here first so I'm Natasha, and I guess I'm from Palau and Koshai, <laughs> and I grew up in Point Bay. Uh, Sammy, Otis from Chuuk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna start with um, our first reactions after we we watched the movie. Right after you're still fresh off the credits, how did you feel? I felt emotionally drained very exposed and raw, lots of feelings. My eyes were shut because I was bawling throughout the whole thing. And I was very silent for like a really long time afterwards. Very thought, thought provoking film. What you, sir? Same thing. It's uh, very emotional. One minute in and you're in the whole, the whole film. Like it drags you. It doesn't drag, <laughs> but it drags you <laughs> <laughs> through the whole film and it's, it's a it's an eye opener. It's a it's unprecedented. Someone said unprecedented earlier, and it's it's probably one of the more important films in of my, my most Im more important films Micronesian films in the past maybe ten years. Yeah, I, I gotta say I included. Uh, I was very raw after watching it. I I was there's a lot of emotions. I was angry. I was sad. Mm. Yes. Frustrated. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, yes. you know, I was a little happy for some of the people, for some of the stuff that they're getting, but at the same time, like, there's a lot of anger and <laughs> sadness, too. But also, it was just such a visually stunning film that I enjoyed. Yes. It looked good. Yeah, it was a really good look. Well, Krasha is beautiful. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it is. <laughs> It is. It. I've mentioned this earlier. You, when you go there, you really feel like you're in this land that, well, I don't know, like a dinosaur or some giant. <laughs> some giant is gonna like come around the corner because it's still so untouched yeah. and. Like a giant sleeping lady or something. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the kind that we hear about in the legends, you know. And yeah, yeah, I gotta say they they like really that. captured the beauty of the island right. very well and. Yeah, that's a credit. I guess we're starting to get into what we liked about the movie. Right, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> let's just talk about that then. Uh, Things we liked. Yeah, and I'll start with the, the cinematography. Yes. It was just beautiful. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's a lot of set-up set shots. We talked about this off-camera, like the puddle yeah. in the road. Oh, I know what the, scene you guys are talking birds, about. Yeah, the kids playing. That is, uh, okay, yeah. And he just captured so much good yeah, stuff. Yeah, like those, if you collect all those setup shots and put it together, that's a commercial for Prashrai. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's like, come visit the islands, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, like, you could really feel, like, like the, the, the really subtle, like, those nuanced things that we miss from back home. Like, an un yes. like a like a pothole that everybody knows about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you don't even have to look down. You're just walking and, you know, to, to dart, right? <laughs> I don't know. Those really small things. Uh, I think I, if character. I can just add to that, that was one thing I liked about it too because it was taking place in Koshai, mm -hmm. but I could see some parts of like where I grew up in right, that, those yeah. moments too. And that's... You could relate. Yeah. Growing up in my community, I could really relate to mm. some of those scenes. Yeah, like you think it would only maybe appeal to Koshayans, but no, that yeah. couldn't be further from the truth. And y apparently we're not so different. <laughs> yeah, I will say that yeah. that uh, this is not just a... Well, it is It is a Koshayan story. Yeah. It. It's, it's more than just a Koshayan. It's a Micronesian story. Much more, even more than a Micronesian story. 
I think. Yes, yes. Like I think I, what what I said about it was, we're in, we're going into the positive side, right? things we liked about mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So, the one thing that I liked the most about it was, it was able to capture, people, like, I said off camera or earlier that. When we talk about Micronesians in the military, on a global scale, we're just numbers, we're statistics, we're like a, a sentence or two in an article, in a paragraph, right? But then this film like jumped into those sentences and it gave us faces, it gave us, gave us names, like it gave us voices. And the most powerful thing about this documentary is the people. Like it was able to give, to bring these stories out these stories that we're all familiar with. I'm, I'm sure everybody that everybody knows someone in the military, right? And yes. you've heard their stories, their accounts, the troubles that they had to go through. Yes. And not a lot of people in the world know about those stories. And then this film like took those stories and just put it on a big screen. Not yeah. a lot of people know about our stories. Exactly. Or, yeah. yeah. And that is really one of the first things that struck me about it was I know people who are experiencing this and I've known about it for years but it never affected me this way and it's because there's like this you don't see it so you don't understand it Uh, there's footage in there that I thought was really unprecedented since we're using that word I mean no it's okay the footage when he goes to is it Afghanistan Mm -hmm. is this it yes so like i've seen afghanistan many times before on cnn you know regular world news footage but i've never seen it in the context of micronesians koshayans it just became 100 percent applicable and relevant and i felt fear totally relatable and i felt the sorry i think that goes back to also what sam was saying because he's you hear all these stories about people you know that went to war in Afghanistan yes. and then now you, you see the story now you actually see them there you see right. the you see the feet on the in. ground yeah. Yeah. yeah actually yeah they didn't really, I think he had more footage of them actually in Afghanistan I could be wrong but that's yeah. cut out of this final version but they they do capture I mean I felt he didn't belong there I, I, if I were there, I wouldn't feel like I belong there either. You're mm. with these people who are Americans, and then you have this one Krishayan person. Like, there's a scene there where he's like, how do you pronounce your name? He mispronounces it anyway. Right. <laughs> right. But this is like something that happens all the time with anybody who has a name that's not... A foreign you know, name. Yeah. Foreign. But just stuff like yeah. that. It's like, this is what you experience. <laughs> on top of the stress of right. being in a war zone and oh just other things like yeah things that i was catching when they were driving in the caravan and they uh, you see the the locals there in their cars i'm like dude if i was a soldier like how this guy is right now seeing this i'd be like we have those kind of cars back home <laughs> you know they were right side drivers and right, like yeah. people are piled in and right. it's those those Japanese cars, those, <laughs> those flatbeds. And I would feel like I relate to them a little bit more than I do, you know, with the people I'm there with. But of course, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never served in any way or form, and I'm, I'm not even, yeah. I, those are just things that uh, really struck me. What were we talking about? <laughs> 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 we well, we were just <laughs> talking about the stuff we like, and we yeah. were talking about... Uh, Oh, how it, it put me, like, really gave yeah. me a better idea. And it just, oh, my gosh. I had friends who would call me, and they wouldn't want to talk about what they were doing. Right. But you could tell. Right. You could hear yeah. this talk to me kind of desperation, mm. sort of. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, I can't even imagine. But how are you doing? And they can't even describe. It's like, I just want to hear a familiar voice or something. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I know what it's like on my side, but I've never seen it on their side of the phone. It is an eye-opener, yeah. Well, uh, can I talk about that then? One thing that I liked was just showing this thing that I never really thought about was just how the VA benefits apply to Micronesians. Veteran Affairs? Yeah. yeah. Is this so, a negative? Well, <laughs> I like that it showed this thing that yeah. oh, they didn't, totally. I didn't know about. Right, like, totally. Because yeah. I, I don't think about our soldiers going home that much and like oh they cannot get all this 
like services that a lot of soldiers need. Right. Yeah. And they have a hard time getting it here. Right. Yeah. Must be way harder. Actually, I kind of mentioned this before when I I told my dad about this movie because my dad is Koshayan and he I I bought the movie basically. I have everything. I'm going to give everything to him because to me this is like my gift to him. This is Nathan Fitch's <laughs> gift to Koshayans, you know, whatever. But um, I asked him. I showed him the trailer and I was like, "What do you feel like would make this? What would you want this movie to talk about?" And that's the first thing he mentioned how mm. how the veterans are being taken care of back home your dad's a doctor my dad's yeah. a doctor okay. yes yeah. so he is aware very aware of the lack of benefits and services and following through of all these things and they're not taking care of people that's if i could say something that yeah that's also something the film did very well like it talked about really important subjects but <clears throat> like okay at the heart of it, the film is about these people, the families, right. these characters. But then, at the same time, th they were able to talk about extremely important topics without like, taking us away from the story, which was the characters, right? So the important oh. topics is like veteran affairs, and not having enough opportunities back home, uh, compact ending in 2023, so people have to get ready for that. You know, people need to make money to support their families, right? These are ex like. Each of those topics could be their own documentaries, mm -hmm. but like they were able to insert these topics into this one, but keep the focus on the families, on the yeah. stories of these veterans, do, of these do, soldiers. Do you think the story antagonized anybody? Wow. Well, the, uh, uh, go ahead. No, okay. I just want to know your opinion. <laughs> While so. I was watching it, there were certain parts uh, where I felt anger, like you mentioned. But then I was thinking, I'm feeling anger as a Micronesian watching this, as a Koshayan watching it. But like, who is he going to show this to? And yes. obviously, if we look at it right now, the people who've Good seen question. it so far, they're not Koshayans. They're not Micronesians. And so how is it going to make them feel? And I'm like, you know what? Is Nathan Fish trying to guilt trip Americans? <laughs> like, because this thing is like, I think it That's does kind of, if it does has have his voice, it has his feeling of guilt. <laughs> That's what I felt. And he's kind of like... The guilt of having foreigners fight their wars like american wars is that what you're trying to say like this is what america america is like to other people mm. are we worth are we worthy right yeah like, this is how we treat them this is how they feel about us are we worthy of this mm. that's another thing you need to be aware that yeah sorry no i'm sorry the, that's another thing the film does successfully right it it makes you think about these important questions without actually saying the questions or telling you the questions yeah it makes you think about these things like yeah is this worth it yeah. like was all of this worth it was a compact worth it right are we oh, fulfilling geez. these promises right they don't outrightly say these things but yeah. when you watch it these questions start to just float in the back of your head yeah. in the back of your mind and when you when the film's over you're like Holy shit. <laughs> Isn't that like the mastery of the, the editing and the film? directing of yeah, the film? Yeah, that's good exactly. writing. Yeah. Like it sets it up subconsciously. Exactly. Like they give information about the region, but it also mentions yeah. the compact and stuff like that. And then at the end, you're like <laughs> following its logical like steps. And at the end, you're just mm. like, what, what, what do we do about this? Or I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's one thing I really, really like. Bravo to the is it Brian Chang who was the editor, yeah. and Nathan Fitch, like the partnership, the cinematography, the editing, the music. So the music, okay, I mentioned earlier <laughs> that the, there's silence in this movie, a the lot of silence, of silence and yeah. the the music in it was like it, it was perfect to provoke these deep thoughts. So the silence really gives you time to digest and feel things, which was so uncomfortable. Nathan Fitch, he like made my eyes so swollen, <laughs> but uh, so many pieces just really made this film so beautiful. Yeah, there was a lot of polish on this film. A lot of what? Polish, like. What do you mean? Oh. Um. Shiny. <laughs> no, well, it's just really well made. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. this is his first film. This is, is right? Like, full-featured documentary, I think. Oh, right, yeah. 
It is yes, his first I film, yeah. And I think that's how it's credited. Bravo. I <laughs> don't even have a first film, but I know mine wouldn't look like that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be very messy. And well, I if I can say the first cut that he had was not this polished, but I was still very struck by the cinematography. I was like, what kind of camera is this guy using? <laughs> what kind of crew does he have? Because I, I'm sure he didn't have a crew, and yet he had really nice, nice video. Yeah. And nice sound. <laughs> Just everything. So I think really he's good. also a genius a little bit. <laughs> yes. Well, let's talk about the director a little bit, I think. Go ahead, Nathan go. Fitch. Where was he in what this movie? What a guy. Movie? Wait, what? Where was he in the movie? We haven't talked about that yet? Well, we did a little earlier, but... That's another positive. Well, right. he was like yeah. the, the videographer of the yeah. whole thing, right? Is that even a word? But he's the one who shot the whole thing. He was the... Yeah. First of all. He filmed it. So he was... He was there at the... Funeral, if we can talk about that. Did we talk about directors inserting themselves into their movies? I think we did earlier yeah. when it was live. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's another big positive. Like uh, having the, I don't know, being thoughtful enough to know when you should be or shouldn't be in the film. And when you talk about silence, like uh, the silence that the film of the filmmaker, that's also very important because. Uh, I'd like to think that they knew that they shouldn't put themselves into this film. I'm talking about the filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Just to give the stage, the full stage to the characters and the families, the people in the, in the film. Yeah. And I thought that was very respectful. And that was a very good move on their part, I think. Because a lot of films, they'd be like, oh, like the director would insert themselves into it. And then right. the, the film would start with, I came up into this island this way. And then yeah. I found this and that. And then... You couldn't see uh, in any of them in the if, film. If his name wasn't on the film, <laughs> you wouldn't know. But yeah. I got to give him credit for that because that's what I really like about it because he just shone a light and opened a lens and let this story be told. Right, yeah. And then I also have to credit the relationship that he built with these people yeah. mm -hmm. to allow him to film all of that stuff. I don't know if we mentioned he was a Peace Corps volunteer in Koshar. Right, yeah. yeah. So that's how he was able to build such a strong relationship with, with the community. Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure you guys are aware we are notoriously bad, uh, hard to film. Well, I mean, I, I feel like I am because as soon as the camera's there, you're totally aware and you stop acting naturally. I guess that's normal for people, but I really felt like he had that fly on the wall kind of feel. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. In, in his in his shot and his video and but I have to say also this could be considered maybe a negative but no it's not it's not a negative but uh, wh what was cool about the film also is when you start watching it you think should I be watching this like <laughs> should I be watching this is a very personal moment in this so it was like a little almost too voyeuristic for you <laughs> it was it intrusive it was very yeah. voyeuristic it and was then, totally voyeuristic but then afterwards it's like but all documentaries are like yeah, like, at the end of it, it felt like I knew those people. You know what I mean? Like, if I met them, I'd be like, oh. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I felt like I could go up to them and shake their hands or something like that. But uh, it's very... And you I, did. You did meet those people. And they are like that. I can tell you. Really? Yeah, he caught it. He totally... Oh. He did not create <laughs> so anything. Wait, did I meet them? <laughs> he did. <laughs> he I don't know. I like that. That was... Um, I don't know. That was an accomplishment. Yeah, it was very good. I think we really like this movie. It was, it was very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a really good documentary. Well, it's a once in a lifetime movie. I said that, but I mean, that's. I probably will regret this because mm. I'm sure someone will hear that as a challenge. Twice in a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, take that challenge on seriously. Make a better movie if you can. But mm. seriously, this was well, an exceptional film. All right. So, are we saying it's without flaws, though? Is there some wow. stuff that we didn't like. Hmm. Uh, think anything? Are no? we getting into the negatives? Yeah, let's, I think we've, we've, we've gushed. Russ, you start. <laughs> <laughs> anything over here? It was in all of my <laughs> All of my cr uh, critique of it, I answered myself by saying that's another movie hmm. or that's another story. And that's another filmmaker probably. Like, I really think he did... Uh, all the things he did, he had to do 
for instance, uh, not having any narration and yes. like he made all the right decisions. If he had, so I really found nothing to critique from like a really general standpoint. But because I kind of am more aware of the culture and mm-hmm. the people, there are things I would have wanted to see. But that's mm. another film, right. I yeah. think, a totally different narrative or story. And he, yeah, yeah, I think he did a really great job. Yeah. For me, it's kind of hard to critique this movie without getting nitpicky. Yes, it, you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with like it's just really small, small, tiny things that don't even really matter to like what? Yeah, like okay, right. so yeah. a couple of times I was just taken out of the movie just a little bit just because of all the the different like rack shots that he used. He was always going in and out of focus on something. Come on. Oh, interesting. And then, but that's being really nitpicky, right? <laughs> I, I, I like can't, those. Yeah, and some of those are really nice shots. Okay. It just after a while, it just got a little bit, for me personally, just a little bit like, it. I got, I started noticing that he was making those choices a lot. Maybe this is an editing or mm. something, but <laughs> it just, uh, but that, that, that took me out of the movie for a moment. And it was a really did short you, moment. Did you notice those towards the end of the film also? Or in the middle of the film? Maybe the... A little bit after the middle of the film. Like, yeah. Okay. But towards the end, yeah. Right. So you you continuously notice those those shots throughout Because I was really liking these shots. Like, oh, man, there he did it again. <laughs> oh, he's good. He did it again. And then, and then it, it was just like, oh, he's doing it oh, again. He's <laughs> <laughs> but I liked it. It was... Again, I'm going to say this was, a, this was a really beautiful movie. I really but, liked the way he shot it. It wasn't like a J.J. Abrams lens flare. Like, <laughs> no. You know, it wasn't overboard. No. Yeah. And, and again, this is just being really nitpicky. And it wasn't mm-hmm. like a huge deal. This was just a really tiny thing that... Okay. Yeah, I didn't notice. I, it doesn't really change my opinion of the movie. I only noticed it after you told me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe I was. I, I just ruined the movie yeah. for everybody. Really, yeah. everything was blurry for me after a certain point. <laughs> well, that's just, you know that's just to get through it. the way I watch movies now too. Yeah. I think mm. I've been because we we do editing and all right. this other stuff and so okay, we're, yeah, awesome. we're getting into the negatives now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have one one okay, negative. Yeah. It's not even a big negative. It's yeah, like of course. Uh, I have to spoil the film a little bit, okay, just a little bit. So, the the film follows three soldiers, right? One who's going into boot camp, one who's getting deployed, and then another one who passed away, who was killed yeah. in action, yeah. right? So, as I said earlier, like the best thing about this film was getting those stories and those characters. So the one, I'm sorry, I I forgot the names. I'm really sorry, but the one that went to boot camp. Uh, Arthur, Arthur, Nana. Right, Arthur and Nana. Like I liked how it jumped from him, and then it went back to his father. Like they they went fishing earlier together, and then it went back, and then the father was fishing by himself. That's Madison. Then? And and he didn't have he couldn't catch anything. Yeah. And I I know that's not because the son wasn't there, but right. But you, to see them trying to continue without their family there, you know what I mean? So oh, so, like on the farm. Uh yeah, like so yeah. it had that. Yeah. It showed you both sides, like how it affected them, right at that time. And then uh, we talked about Marianne, right? Yeah. Uh, and Sakuro, the one who passed away, the one who was killed in action. That was done beautifully, jumping back and forth, mm-hmm. right? So my criticism—it's not really a criticism. It's just something that I wanted to see a little more. Mm. Was with the the deployed his, guy, the, the one yeah. who was deployed to Sigra. Afghanistan, Sigra, right? Yeah. Like. They followed him a lot when he was in Afghanistan, but I really wanted to see yeah. how the wife and the kids were yes. doing. Yes, how were they yes. handling waiting for him, yes. uh, anticipating his return? Yes. Whenever the phone rang, how was it like? You know what I mean? Like, yes. So you saw how the father was waiting for the people they the left son. at home. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought that was a missed opportunity, if I can say that. But. I had I, I spotted that only when I after I watched the film the third time because mm-hmm. I watched it twice and then the third time I had to go through because I was actively looking for something, yeah. <laughs> something yeah. to talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I was like wait a minute there's something missing here and yeah. then that's that's my one that was also my, my biggest thing, thing yeah. that I was like uh but it's a different maybe it's a different story was yes, yeah. the, the predominantly like male 
soldier thing because there are women who mm. join from Koshai. I have some female cousins who are mm. enlisted. But I, um, and also the wife, he talked about how it was a challenge to reconnect after being, after coming back from yes. such a crazy place. And I'm like, <gasps> more, more. And then it, it stopped that. But I did feel like there were certain like, large characters that they were capturing so they had the mother figure a father figure and a child so i didn't really think son i thought more child i guess i didn't really think of the other Mm, i feel you family members but yeah that's that's it (laughs) no it's a very that is a very good point Mm. because like you really think he's getting the full story but he's not he's totally yeah, not and he's also really portraying Krishayans as like really wholesome I mean they are great people we are great people we're all great mm. people but no one is perfect mm. and no one is like that heroic everyone has their flaws so for me when I watch documentaries I always think are there flaws do I feel the flaws in the characters because I like that I really like I love underdog stories that's what this is and I love heroes that have flaws. That's right. why I think I really like. Yeah, but this film has really uh, characters, and it doesn't portray any of their flaws. But I think he had to do that because he's not Koshayan, and he because he's not. Yeah, that's not his culture. Mm. I think he would have maybe angered people <laughs> if he, you know, really took a stance on portraying things right. I think that's maybe for other people to tell maybe in another film totally <laughs> that's how I felt about it. let me ask this question maybe we already talked about it about, about this thing but did this movie change the way you think about the military the military or <laughs> people in the military or actually it did for me and in what way so I've always been very sort of anti-militarism and like I mentioned this talking to people before Same, growing yeah. up yeah. in Point Bay, uh, whenever I had, well, my, when my classmates would talk about joining the military and we're in high school, I'd be like, why? Why would you do that? Because mm-hmm. I have this feeling like it kills your individualism and like it, it's just why, why would you? To me, <laughs> to me, the next logical step was school. Mm-hmm. That didn't pan out so well, but that's another story. Uh, but that kind of has always been my opinion of it and this movie actually made me uh, more open-minded and I actually realize now more why people do it and it's not it's not a shallow decision or not a well thought out decision it's very well thought out and they're doing it to make a living and to make something of themselves and it's really one of the better opportunities that people have it's a career choice yeah Yeah. and so it it gave me another perspective that i needed and i really have much more respect for it i really still yeah go ahead oh no 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 go ahead (laughs) it just made me more i guess more friendly in my views to this opportunity but so 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 resentful Mm. like the whole recruitment (laughs) <laughs> that's crazy that you said recruitment because <laughs> I'm trying to how do I say this okay uh, one of the biggest problems I had with just a military film about Micronesians like in general is uh, who's the audience who's the targeted audience and will this can this be used as a military recruiting film right so that was that was one of the big questions I had going into before I watched the film so um, one of the things that I always think about is okay so this is a this is a documentary and I'm not sure how the youngsters are like now but when I was in high school when I was about 17 18 I did not like watching documentaries even if it had to do with like us or our our countries and our people it wasn't interesting to me but then the, the things that were interesting were imageries just little images and short clips and stuff like that. And then in this time when, like, the way we consume information, it's, like, in one-minute segments. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, in trailer-length fi- videos and footages. So one of, my, one of my concerns and worries is 
the younger generation may not watch this film because when I watched this film it enforced my negative outlook on militarization in the Pacific mm. right but if you were a younger person and you weren't interested in watching documentaries and you just saw like really pretty images and cinematography and <laughs> and Micronesians in uniform they look cool they look badass they're famous. yes they had guns like all that stuff and they're traveling all over the world right people are in some cases idolizing them right would that be can that be like by accident can that be a way of recruiting kids into the military and that's what that's my concern so <laughs> I don't know to romanticize uh, the military did that film do that I can't say because I don't know how it will be perceived by the younger the young the younger people someone who's 17 or 18 and then they see like a poster of a Micronesian man or woman in right. in this uniform and they look so you know imposing and their their photos are in like airports and on posters being shown in, in movie theaters and stuff like that like what does that tell the young mind you know <laughs> i i gotta say i really don't think this film is a recruitment it will have yeah i don't effect. think the film is at all but uh, some of the imagery uh, might that's be. my concern yeah i feel like they have already the, any sort of influence they would get whatever influence they would get from this film would pale in comparison to what they get from the United States government when they're recruiting people. Like, mm. I had no idea. And in this film, they had footage of a recruitment office, I believe. Right. I think this is in Koshai. Mm. That is probably, like, one of the most well-equipped offices on the island that I've ever seen. Like, I was like, is this Koshai? Like, I thought this was Guam or something. Like, they had that... The whole setup of the place, how impressive is that to a youngster? Right, yeah. This huge widescreen TV, <laughs> they're taking pictures, and like I noticed really quickly, these were high school students that broke my heart. How impressionable is that? Mm. And they're signing up and... And then they did that, and I mean, it sounds like it worked. <laughs> yeah. I think oh, it's gonna work, yeah. And I don't think this film, if anything, this film just sort of makes people more aware and I would hope that may, they might lose all these uh, larger messages but they would see that it's not so great and it also makes I think us more aware that people look at us and wonder mm. what are you doing here right why are you even enlisting that's one of the most powerful things it was this really quick <laughs> part of the film where like the mic was on and they had the guys talking to each other and the, the caravan this is like in Afghanistan if, yeah I'm seeing things wrong <laughs> and they're discussing the other dude the Koshayan dude I'm assuming this is how I took it in mm. these two American dudes are talking about wondering why he enlisted because to them they do it out of patriotism right, right. why do they sign up and I'm like wow that's Oh my gosh like yeah. that's what they think about us and i yeah. hope that that goes into like what i was saying about there are all these big questions that come out of this film mm. you know and that's another so, big so one so subtly yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so subtle you could miss it you could yeah. totally miss it and i caught it because i was really closely watching and reading subtitles and mm -hmm. i was able to rewind if right. i saw this in the theater it would have just passed over yeah, my it's, head it's really worth watching more than once I yes think. Yeah. you have to you must own it <laughs> go and get it i don't know how long we'd have to wait for it to <laughs> to eventually get there but we'll have to wait and see but i think uh, we should start wrapping this up yeah oh god so i'm gonna ask you guys for your final thoughts uh what you want to let our viewers know about this movie whether they should go see it or not etc etc so i'll start right here Oh, gosh. <laughs> really? Okay. Um, if you are Koshayan, you have to see this movie. I'm not even, like, full Koshayan. People would probably tell me, you're not Koshayan, because, like, it, anyway, that's a different story. But I felt it. Like, you, you need to watch it. If you're a Micronesian, you need to watch it, because it's about us. And it's our story. It's our movie. We need to be aware that it exists and support <laughs> it and own it and share it and if you're not Micronesian 
you need to watch it because it's a well-made film it's a really thought-provoking story it's applicable to your life if you're a mother or a father if you're a citizen of the world that <laughs> has armies and war all kinds of stuff it's mm. really it's well made Nathan Fitch Bravo Brian Chang, Chang Bravo <laughs> everything excellent and I couldn't recommend it more I'm so thrilled it's premiering at HIF here in Hawaii and I will be there for sure yes premiere you have tickets I have tickets <laughs> and I will have a snot towel and hopefully <laughs> okay. I'm glad I got to see it once so that I could get all the tears out hopefully it won't be such a mess but it's really oh man you, you don't want to miss it it's a shame that it's only showing twice mm-hmm. yeah it is it is. It is a shame. <laughs> it is a What's shame. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your last thoughts. My Sam. final thoughts. Uh, there's so much to say still. Yeah, I want to keep going. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I think. I would really like more people to see it. Of course, like it's it's really worth watching more than once. And I'm not just saying that just to say it. It's really important. It's one of the more important films on Micronesia in the past 10, 20 years because now the camera is on us. Like This is us telling you the stories. That's so important and that can't be, like I can't say that enough, <laughs> right? But the other thing is I can't wait for other people to watch this so I can start talking about it <laughs> <laughs> with other people, you know what I mean? Like It's such a good, yeah. all those topics that come up from this all the little stuff that we ask ourselves like you know, me and this guy we talk all the time <laughs> but i want to talk to people <laughs> <laughs> we want to talk to you i don't know it, it's just watch it like everybody should watch it like it needs to be shown in classrooms that's what i think i think it will it will work really well in like a civics class right. back home right it's really important and even if you're not in class you should just watch it yeah, it's good for everybody and unprecedented and classic <laughs> instant yeah, classic, classic. Right. Yeah. Uh, my thoughts were uh, I have to agree if you're a Micronesian you should watch this movie mm-hmm. if you have one opinion either way about the military you should watch this movie yes. if you're a film lover or a documentary lover you should watch this movie yes. just for the the cinematography and editing alone mm-hmm. um, and if you're uh, about well health and VA benefits you should watch this movie either way right. because there's a lot of things in it and it's not this film isn't always black and white I think it, it's very good at presenting a lot of sides of this but mostly also just to show this story about these individuals that I don't think anybody else would have made this movie about or for mm-hmm. yes yeah. yes so if you're interested in seeing something about something you didn't even know you wanted to watch I, I really recommend watching this movie and that's my final thoughts uh, anything else from you guys alright so the movie's <laughs> prefer- premiering next Friday oh well this November Wait, November next 3rd Friday. Next Friday. November 3rd yeah. this is in Honolulu yeah in Honolulu but uh, it's showing in other places like New York and stuff. Yeah, we'll put up links on how else you can try to find the, the film. Right. If you can make the premiere at IF. Yes. Right, yeah. I think we all really highly recommend this movie. Highly recommend yes. it. Yeah. And uh, we hope you guys watch it too and leave your comments if you've seen it. Try not to spoil it too much for everybody. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we just hope to hear more from you guys and hear your suggestions or whatever for more content. Uh, for TFB, again, I'm Russell. Natasha. Otis. And uh, we hope you guys catch us again next time. And thank you again to Nathan Fitch for letting us review this movie. Aloha.